Okay, so if I want to divide uh, this linear binomial x minus 2 into the polynomial x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 9x minus 11, we learned in our last lesson how to do that using polynomial long division. So my divisor uh, would go out front. Let's move that over here, give us some room. So x minus 2, and then the dividend would go under, oops, forgot the zero, would go under the division bar. So I put in a zero for my missing cubic uh, term in the polynomial as a placeholder. And then the rest of my terms are listed in uh, descending order of exponent. And then the algorithm for long division, I asked myself, what do I multiply times x to get x to the fourth? And that would be an x cubed. Then I'm going to multiply that uh, quantity times both terms in my divisor. So x cubed times x is x to the fourth. x cubed times negative 2 is a negative 2x cubed. Draw a line, change the sign, and I'm subtracting both terms of that binomial. So now I ask myself, um, when I combine like terms, what's left? So I'm going to subtract x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is zero. Zero x cubed minus a negative is a positive two x two x cubed, and that's going to leave me with a positive two x cubed and then minus 7x squared when I bring down the next term. And then we're going to repeat that algorithm. So what do I multiply times x to get 2x cubed? And that would be a 2x squared. Right? Then I'm going to distribute 2x squared times x is a 2x cubed. 2x squared times negative 2 is negative 4x squared. Draw a line, change my sign and then I'm um, going to combine like terms. So 2x cubed minus 2x cubed cancels. Negative 7x squared minus a negative is a plus 4x squared. And so that's going to be a negative 3x squared and then plus 9x when we bring down the next term. Then we repeat that algorithm again. So what do we multiply times x to get negative 3x squared? And that would be a negative 3x. Then we're going to multiply. Negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared. Negative 3x times negative 2 is a positive 6x. Draw a line, change our signs, and then we're going to combine like terms. So negative 3x squared minus a negative is plus 3x squared. That cancels. 9x minus 6x is a positive 3x and then minus 10 when we bring down the next term. And then um, last time repeating that algorithm, what do we multiply times x to get 3x? And that would be a positive 3. Then we're going to multiply. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Draw a line, change our sign, and then combine like terms. So 3x minus 3x cancels. That's a 0. Negative 10 minus a negative is plus 6 is going to give us a remainder of negative 4. So since the remainder is not 0, we know that the divisor x minus 2 is not a factor of x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 9x minus 10. Right? Now when we have a linear divisor like this, um, we can use a shortcut for this division called synthetic division. And synthetic division comes from noticing in the long division that if we um, take a look at the things that uh, actually impact this division, uh, coming up with the right answer, right? If I notice um, it's always what I write up here, I'm canceling out those first terms, right? And so this 2 here, right, this um, 4, this 6, and this 6, right? Those are the things that I'm actually doing math operations with, right? All the rest of these cancel, um, and so really what was the point of writing them anyway if they're just going to cancel every time based on what I put there. 
and the uh, the value that I'm subtracting each of those that I circled um, from comes from the original coefficients in my polynomial, right? So when I take negative 10 minus negative 6, it's this negative 10 that I'm actually doing that subtraction with. When I look at that um, 6x here that I subtracted, it came from this 9x term up above in my original, right? The 7, negative 7x seven squared came from my original that I um, took minus a negative 4x squared from, right? Then my 0x cubed and my x to the fourth. So really the only things I need to have written down when I'm doing this division are um, not the things that cancel each time, but the coefficients of these terms in my original polynomial and then the values that I'm going to subtract from them. So what we do in synthetic division to shorten up this process is I focus on just the coefficients on those terms in my original polynomial. So when I look at my original here, I have an x to the fourth power. That's one x to the fourth power. I have negative seven x squared. So I'm gonna put just the coefficient there. Um, oh, I forgot my zero. I have zero x cubed, so I don't wanna miss that place value. Then negative seven x squared, a positive nine x's, and negative 10 is my constant. So again, I just took the coefficients, right? I took the one in front of the x to the fourth, there were zero x cubes, so I put a zero there as a placeholder, negative seven for my x squareds, nine for my x's, and negative 10 for my constant. Now I'm going to, instead of putting my division bar right side up, I'm going to flip it upside down like this, just to organize my work a little better. And I'm not going to write the entire divisor out front like I did in long division, it's really just that um, negative two that is impacting these second values. Because remember when I distribute, the first term always cancels. So I wanna focus in on that second term of my divisor. And um, rather than having to distribute a negative every time, if I just change the sign of my divisor right off the bat, instead of multiplying by negative two and then changing the sign, I'm just gonna put a positive two. I'm gonna change the sign right at the beginning, and then I can just um, add to combine my like terms. So now when I notice in my first um, trip around that division algorithm, my first term here always cancels without ever having to do anything to it. So I'm just gonna bring down that first term, um, my one, okay, then I'm gonna multiply one times two is two. I'm gonna write that underneath the zero, right? See, so here's my zero, there's my two. So I'm writing zero and two. Then I'm gonna add those together. Zero plus two is two. Okay, and then I'm gonna multiply two times two is four and add those together. Negative seven plus four is negative three. And that represents this block right here. There's my negative seven, right? Minus a negative is plus four is a negative three. Now I'm gonna multiply negative three times two is negative six. Then I'm gonna add those together. Nine plus negative six is positive three. And there's that block right there, that section. There's my nine minus six equals three. Okay, then I multiply three times two is six, right? Then I'm gonna add negative 10 plus six is negative four. And there's that block right there. Negative 10 minus negative six is plus, and negative 10 plus six is negative four. And there's my negative four. So I can um, analyze my solution here and see that that is my remainder. Okay, then if I look from my remainder up here to the top where my quotient is, here's the three for my constant. Right next to that is my negative three, which was my linear term. So this is my x, right? This was my constant. There's um, my two x squared, right? So this is an x squared. And then there's my one x cubed. So this is my x cubed term. So I have an x cubed plus two x squared minus three x plus three with a remainder of four.
right? So when I interpret that bottom row for that solution, that's x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 3 with a remainder of 4. And when we write that remainder, we put it over the divisor. And that would be the solution to this division problem that I started with without having to write all of that long, cumbersome, long division process. Okay? So that is synthetic division. It's a shortcut that we can use to divide polynomials when we have a binomial linear divisor. So in the notes for synthetic division, okay, on the front here, we have our divisor is a negative 2. And remember, we changed the sign. So the divisor that that negative 2 came from would have been a factor of x plus 2. Okay. Then my dividend, the coefficients of my dividend are 2, 7, and 6, and that would have come from an original polynomial, right, where 6 would have been my constant. Then the 7 would have been my linear term, my x's, and then my 2 would have been the quadratic term because they would be in standard form with exponents decreasing. So that would have been my original dividend, 2x squared plus 7x plus 6, if I'm interpreting the synthetic division. Now, when you do synthetic division, remember that your process is to always bring down that first term. So that would be a 2. And then I multiply, add, multiply, add going across. So in synthetic division, you bring down the first term, okay? Then you're going to multiply and add until you run out of terms. Okay, so we multiply and add going across. So we're gonna multiply two times negative two, and that answer is a negative four. I write that in my next place value. Then I'm going to add those together. 7 plus negative 4 is a positive 3. Then I'm going to multiply. 2 times negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6. Okay, I write that underneath. And then I add those together. 6 minus 6 is a 0. And that, um, when we interpret that solution, that bottom row, remember the last value is the remainder. Okay, then my next term would be the constant, and the one before that would be the x. So my quotient is 2x plus 3. Right? And since the remainder is 0, I know that my divisor and my quotient are factors of my dividend. Okay? And that is how we look at synthetic division. So in example one, okay, um, my remainder theorem says that if f of x is divided by a factor um, x minus k, or a divisor x minus k, the remainder is going to be f of k. Okay, the factor theorem we learned about in our last lesson on long division, if a term divides evenly into the polynomial, then it's a factor. And that would be when the remainder equals zero, right? To be a factor, the remainder must be zero. So if I apply the remainder theorem and the factor theorem together, right? The remainder theorem says that if I take f of x and my divisor is x minus k, remember for synthetic division, we change the sign right off the bat. So I would use k to substitute in for my x's in order to find the remainder. So if my original polynomial is x cubed minus 2x minus x plus 2, and I'm dividing by the, um, the divisor x minus 2, then my k is positive 2. So I'm going to evaluate f of 2. I put in a 2 everywhere I see an x. And then I'm going to evaluate that. So 2 to the third power is 8. 
then two squared is four times negative two is negative eight. Then I have a minus two and a plus two and negative eight plus eight is zero. Negative two plus two is zero. And so I end up with a zero when I evaluate f of two. That zero is the remainder that I would get when I divide um, x minus two into x cubed minus two x squared minus x plus two. So now I know that I would have a remainder of zero. So that tells me that x minus two, that binomial is a factor. And if it's a factor, then I would go ahead and do my synthetic division, which the work here is shown for me in synthetic division. So when I interpret that solution line at the bottom, right, the last is always the remainder, then my constant, my x, and my x squared. So since the remainder is zero, I know my divisor and my quotient are factors of that original polynomial. So that tells me that x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2 could be written as a product of the divisor, which was my binomial x minus 2, times the quotient, which was the last line of my synthetic division, and that was an x squared minus 1. Right? And so that would be rewritten as a product of two factors. Okay, so when I look at example B, I have the polynomial x cubed minus x squared minus 16x minus 20. And I want to know what is the remainder going to be when I divide that by the binomial x plus 5. So I would be using a k of negative 5. So I'm going to evaluate f of negative 5 and that tells me everywhere I have an x in my polynomial I'm going to substitute negative 5 and evaluate that. Okay, so in um, the calculator, where is my calculator? Okay, so in my calculator if you um, have a graphing calculator that you're working with. Here, let's slide this over so we can see the screen. You can store, if you use the, um, the store button down here up above the on, we're going to put in negative 5 and then I'm going to hit that store button, S-T-O, and see how it puts a little arrow there on the screen. So negative 5 and I'm going to store that as X. Okay, then I can type in my original here, so x to the third power minus x squared minus 16x, oops, minus 20. And now since I've told the calculator to store negative 5 as x, it's going to do that substitution for me so I don't have to worry about all those parentheses. And I end up with a remainder of negative 90. Right? Now if you don't have that calculator that stores values as variables, you can type in that whole thing by hand. Whoops, that should be a 3. So negative 5 uh, to the third minus and then negative 5 squared minus 16 times negative 5 minus 20 and see we get that negative 90. So um, you can always do it that way if you don't have a calculator that stores values as x. So this negative 90 is my remainder, right, which I evaluated using the remainder theorem. Since my remainder is not equal to 0, I know from the factor theorem that this binomial divisor x plus 5 is not a factor of my original polynomial. And so I would not take the time to do synthetic division because I'm looking for factors and I know that that's not going to factor using x plus 5. Okay, so if I try that with example c, then my k here is going to be a negative 3. So I'm going to evaluate f of negative 3 by substituting negative 3 in 
to this polynomial for all of my x's. Okay, and then in the calculator, I'm going to store negative 3 as my x and then evaluate 3x to the third power plus x squared minus 27x minus 9. And I get a remainder of 0. So since my remainder is 0, now I know that x plus 3 is a factor of my polynomial. And then it's worth taking the time to do the synthetic division so I can find the other factor. So now I'm going to use um, negative 3 as my divisor in the synthetic division. And then my coefficients on each of those terms in the dividend. I have a 3x cubed, a 1x squared, negative 27x's, and the constant is negative 9. Okay, I always bring down the first term to start and then multiply, add, multiply, add until we run out of terms going across. So 3 times negative 3 is a negative 9. Then I'm going to add those together. 1 plus negative 9 is negative 8. Then we multiply. Negative 8 times negative 3 is a positive 24. Then we're going to add those together. Negative 27 plus 24 is a negative 3. Then we multiply. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Add those together. Negative 9 plus 9, and there's my remainder of 0. So that's my remainder. Then my quotient is going to have a constant of negative 3, negative 8 x's, and 3 x squareds. So when I represent my original polynomial as a product of factors, 3x cubed plus x squared minus 27x minus 9, that was my original uh, polynomial, that can be written as the product of my divisor, which was x plus 3, times, and then my quotient, 3x squared minus 8x minus 3. Okay.